Michelle here. Today's topic is dangers in psychology part three and today we are going to look at Satan. I'm sure you guys can see from the screen. Uh, yes, it, it's from here. It's um those who know the truth are special targets. Satan diverts mind by controversial subjects. Actually, nope. We're going to start for, from a power for good, a power for evil. And we're going to start from there and we're going to go down. And we're probably going to spend maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes. So wherever I finish, that's where I'm going to stop. So let's, let's, let's actually start with this. A power for good, a power for evil. The, the influence of mind on mind. So strong a power for good when sanctified is equally strong for evil in the hands of those opposed to God. This power Satan used in his work of instilling evil into minds of angels and he made it appear that he was seeking the good of the universe. As, he, as the anointed cherub, Lucifer had been highly exalted he was greatly loved by the heavenly beings and his influence over them was strong. Many of them listened to his suggestions and believed his words. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought and prevailed not. Neither was their place was their place found anymore in heaven. And that's from the book of, the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 8, but later 114, 1903. So, what do we know so far? Um, heavenly beings, heavenly angels deceived by Satan because they saw Satan as a higher power, which indeed he was to the angels. He was third in heaven. I mean, no, fourth in heaven. He was the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Satan. Satan was next to Christ. Well, and if you don't want to put the Holy Spirit, then you can say he was third. But he was right after Jesus Christ. And so, they, he didn't like the idea of being beneath Jesus Christ. And that's when we learn the psychology of the mind, of the brain. So, because he wanted to be in power, he used, he didn't know at that time, but now we know he was using psychology to brainwash the other angels to follow him in the pursuit of, over, of overthrowing God's kingdom so he can be God. And that's what's happening right now. And this is the, the power that one mind can have over another mind. I'm just checking around to make sure that I'm not making there's no noise. And so that's the that's the thing. The power of one mind over another mind especially if the one exercising the power is above you but let's move on one man's mind not to be trusted 
one man's mind and one man's judgment was not to be trusted for two great interests were at stake and it was not free from human frailties and human errors. There is not any one man's mind so perfect that there is no danger of his moving from wrong motives. There is not there's not any one man's mind so perfect that there is no danger of his moving from one motive, viewing things from a wrong standpoint. Letter 41, 1891. And again, uh, we we know that, so I guess I can just move on. And um, if I don't make it to 20 minutes, it's okay. Um, that's the max. I'm probably gonna do but usually I make it 10 12 minutes so max is 20 minutes I don't want to go more than that Satan watching for unguarded minds Satan is watching that he may find the mind in an unguarded moment and so get possession of it we do not want to be ignorant of his devices neither do we want to be overpowered by his devices he is pleased with the pictures that represent him as having horns and hooves, for he has intelligence, for he once was an angel of light. Manuscript 11, 1993. And I am sure you've been seeing a lot of pictures of so-called Satan having a red costume and horns and a hook on his hand and like a pitchfork and a tail well that's a very funny picture because satan actually looks more like an angel of light actually he was now what what is portrayed in the world is a deception and that's why the power of psychology if he makes you think that he looks like this so that when he comes as an angel of light and presents himself as a good angel he would believe that it is not satan but in fact that's where the deception comes believing something when it's something else you know it's easier to for satan to deceive people by not coming as a dragon because if he comes as a dragon everyone's gonna know it is him but if he comes as an angel of light everyone's gonna believe it is not him that's the that's the deception and that's the psychological um perspective evil angel attempts to destroy men's will if permitted, the evil angel will work, meaning captive and control the mind of men, until they have no mind or will of their own. Manuscript 64, Manuscript 64, 1904. And yes, we can see people now, um, they don't think right sometimes. And they... Um, Maybe. They don't think right sometimes and you can see what they are thinking is just pure evil. Actually, in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, the Bible says that the people, believe, the people before the, the flood, their thoughts were evil continually. Well, that means they were being led by evil angels. Evil angels captivated their mind and control their mind the same way at the time of Jesus' crucifixion evil angels captivated the Pharisees' mind and some of the people's mind so they could kill Jesus Christ that's how it works so the battle is for the mind that's why you can see in that picture it is in your mind whether you're going to serve Christ or Satan which one are you going to choose? That's for you. And 
I guess we're gonna end with this one since uh, yeah we have some more to go so we're gonna end with this one I try I don't I try I try not to go all the way to past 15 so we're probably gonna end with this one only safety in resistance our only safety is in giving no place to the devil for his suggestions and purposes are ever to ensure us and hinder us from relying upon God. He transforms, he transforms himself into an angel of purity that he may, through his specious temptations, introduce his devices in such a manner that we may not discern his wiles. The more we yield, the more powerful will be his deceptions over us. It is unsafe to controvert or to parley with him. For every advantage we give the enemy, he will claim more. What happened with Eve? If you don't know the story, go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. You're going to see what happens there. Our only safety is to reject firmly the first insinuation to presumption. God has given us grace through the merits of Christ sufficient to withstand Satan and be more than conquerors. Resistance is the success. And yes, I know that verse. That's from James chapter 4. First he says this. Commit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So first thing is, you have to commit yourself to God. Then, resist the devil, and therefore he will flee from you. Resistance must be firm and steadfast. We lose all we gain if we resist today only to yield tomorrow. So resistance is not just a one day thing. So basically, if you think because you've been baptized you are saved, I can guarantee you that's when Satan comes even more. So it's a daily walk. Not a once saved, always saved. It's a daily walk. Daily you have to resist the devil. Daily you have to commit to God. And that until you die or until Christ comes the second time. Other than that, there is no safety for you. Resistance is success. And that's from that's taken from the book Review and Herald, April 8, 1880. Avoiding presumptuous acts. I guess we're gonna finish right here because it's now 13 minutes. There are those who recklessly place themselves in scenes of danger and peril and expose themselves to temptation, out of which it will require a miracle of God to bring them unharmed and untainted. These are presumptuous acts which, with which God is not pleased. Think of Matthew chapter 4, the second temptation that Satan brought to Jesus in the, in the wilderness. Oh, okay, it's right there actually. Satan's temptation to the Savior of the world to cast himself from the pinnacle of the temple was firmly met and resisted. That was a temptation. That's called presumptuous prayer. The arch enemy quoted a promise of God as security that Christ might with safety do this on the strength of the promise. Jesus met this temptation with scripture. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In the same way, Satan urges men into places where God does not require them to go, presenting, presenting scripture to justify his suggestions. Review and Herald, April 8, 1880. There we have it. So, what we do is, we say, you know what, I can't go there because God's going to protect me. Well, yes, and God will protect you. But don't forget, God doesn't want, to, doesn't want you to go there. And of course, I'm sure we have gone places, as well as, my, as myself, where we knew it wasn't the right place. But we know we are with friends, and we wanted to have fun, so we did it together. But then we're like, man, that was a dumb idea to do. Now you're thinking about it. Back then, you thought it was a fun idea. Now it's not the same thing. So... We need to do our best to not put ourselves into, into temptations, but to 
ask God to help us flee when temptation comes to us. Um, it's better, and God will be much happier to save you from temptation when temptation comes to you. That means you are doing something right and Satan is trying to tempt you. Or then you running towards temptation, you know. God doesn't want you to run towards the tornado. He wants you to run away from the tornado. And that way he's going to protect you by not, uh, by not allowing the tornado to come to you. But if you are running straight at the tornado when you can see it's coming, then you cannot ask God to protect you while you are going there. You have to turn around. And then God's going to do everything, of course, to protect you from the tornado. So, what do we have today? Um, that was Danger of Psychology, Part 3. And uh, we ended up, we ended at um, avoiding presumptuous acts. And so I hope that you and I learned something about that, that we we do our best. And of course to teach uh, the young ones not to enter into those situations. So, that's it for today. This was Margaret Michelle. I hope to see you again. If I don't see you again, I hope to see you again when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mother out.